California will have a new governor at noon tomorrow when Gavin Newsom is sworn in as the 40th governor of the state. What kind of advice would the current governor, Jerry Brown, offer his successor, considering the fact Jerry Brown has been in the office a record four terms? One big change between the time that you were first elected statewide office in 1970 to today is that back then there was a vigorous two-party system in California. Now Democrats run the place. In terms of public policy, is that a good thing? Well, it's a good thing as long as I'm governor, because I can say no to the Democrats. Uh, here's the formula. Republicans only know how to say no, almost everything. Democrats only know how to say yes to everybody. So the equalizer is the governor who can veto, cajole, and collaborate with the legislature. And I think that's what uh, the next governor has got to keep in mind. Or work with the Democrats, but say no when you have to, and work with the Republicans to give them a little bit of the action, but they've got to come out of the Stone Age. Uh, they, they, they get a little bit... They're a third party. They're, 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 be, they're, they're behind a, decline to stay. Well, they're they a third e party because they, you know, they, they, they love Trump, and uh, most California doesn't think Trump's doing a good job. So uh, we need some moderate Republicans like we had Earl Warren, uh, Eisenhower. Uh, that's, that's what they better start role modeling on. You told 60 Minutes back in 1976 that if you take all the things the family used to do for free, uh, that the state is now being asked to do, which is daycare, which is pre-kindergarten, which is meals, breakfast, lunch, in some cases someone's yeah. dinner at schools, uh, nursing homes, that the state just simply can't afford it. Well, you I don't believe that? Yes. I mean, I think the state can do a lot. But I'm also worried about the institutionalization of people from the first moments of their birth uh, to the end of their life. Uh, are we all going to be managed by, uh, by a bureaucracy, by civil servants? I mean, but the answer is the family's got to have the resources. And then they need the assistance of child care, and uh, certainly nursing homes are important at the end of life. Uh, this is a dilemma. The modern society is taking away the means of sufficiency. Uh, when my great-grandfather couldn't make it, make it in Germany, or what was called then Prussia, he got on a sailboat, he came over here, but there was land. And this land that I'm going to be living on was a dollar an acre. Uh, you're not going to find any dirt for a dollar an acre anymore. So there was the expansion. What was it, half a million people? Now there's 40 million people, and there's 33 uh, million vehicles uh, driving all over the place. It's more expensive, in many ways more dangerous, and we're all kind of colliding with one another, so we need a lot of rules. But we've got to temper it. We need a lot of wisdom, and uh, we need some careful decision-making and not motorized legislation where everyone wants a law to solve every problem. Well, let's talk about that. Um, this, you told the San Francisco Chronicle that you have signed bills into law that you would rather have vetoed, but you needed to do that in order to maintain a relationship with, the, right. with the, legis with the so legislature. Marriage is like that, too, isn't it? Well, <laughs> as you found out. Uh, but, no, uh, we agree. My wife and I agree on almost, uh, everything. Under, almost everything. So, um, but talk to us about that. Are there too many laws? Of course there are too many laws. There are more stu First of all, a lot of laws start out as something more forceful, but people don't want it. So they water it down, they keep the same name without the force. So you get a bunch of bills that uh, are totally unique. Then you got a lot of bills that overreach. And each, each bill, when it becomes a law, then spawns several regulations. And then you have more people in the bureaucracy. And then it's the coercive arm of government reaching deeper and deeper into the soul of California. It needs to be tempered. Some would argue, though, that when it comes to reform efforts, such as criminal justice reform, yeah. that the first thing you do is the easiest thing, let people out of prison. The most difficult thing never happens, which is help them find a job, help them re-enter uh, society. It happened, for example, when 50 years ago we got rid of mental institutions. We let people out, out but the follow-up never took place in terms of outpatient. Yeah, I remember the head of, the director of mental hygiene uh, saying to my father in my presence, he said, Pat, I can empty the mental hospitals with this pill. But that was when the pills came about they thought could fix people's mental illness, uh, which work in many cases. Uh, if they take it, oh, well, it doesn't work at all. So look, the, the, the emptying of the hospital, big mistake. Uh, and now we have billions of dollars uh, that are available for mental health. That's very important. And then in the prisons, we are restoring programs. And we have to have a parole system 
that can let people out earlier or later based on whether uh, they observe the rules, they study, they avoid gangs, they don't sell dope, and all the other crazy things that go on in our prisons. You have to have incentives, and the fixed determinant sentencing uh, was a mistake. And we went from uh, 20 to 25,000 pe uh, people in prison to 175,000. And on the course we're on now, we have 10,000 people who will die in prison today. They're going to get to be 70 and 80 and older. And we're going to have the most expensive, biggest gerontology ward in the world. And I think before that happens, we ought to have rehabilitation, mental health, drug treatment, and good parole supervision. And there is a better way. It isn't just uh, throw them in these institutions and then pay more and more money, get sued, and have all these people come and uh, try to reform. True, but along those lines, yeah. lots of things have improved since you became governor the second time. We're the fifth largest economy in the world. You had a massive budget deficit when you arrived. But some would say one thing that is certainly top of mind for cities of San Francisco, LA, and San Diego is the homeless problem. It's gotten worse, more mentally ill on the street, fewer people are using Metro. Uh, that may be because of gas prices, but there are people who are afraid because of the mentally ill that are there. Is this the new normal? No, this is really bad, and the local governments have got to step up to the plate. Uh, I know the homeless advocates are, are very effective, uh, but you have to have some uh, minimal uh, requirements and standards, and the coercive arm of government can be effective. I, my view is we've got too many people staying in prison too long, but we've got too many people on the streets who aren't even in jail at all. And you've got to get those people off the street, into drug treatment, into mental health programs, but controlled, maybe out on a farm doing something healthy. But you can't have is people... Is that a local issue or is that a state issue? It's both. And we have money in the budget now. We have more money for homeless than ever before. And I think the new governor is going to put up even more. But you have to take the people off the streets, and you've got to do something with them. You can't just have people just take over and, and say, I'm here, uh, here's my tent, get out of my way. That, that civilization cannot accept that at the end of the day. So I, I do think the local government and the liberal cities are going to have to get uh, uh, more effective. And that means being wiser and compassionate, but also tougher and coercive. We'll have more with the exit interview for Governor Jerry Brown when we return.